Bethune-Cookman College, the Pine Haven Housing Project, just two of the endeavors of Mary McLeod Bethune. Only five foot four, she walks tall across one of the most significant periods in American history, from Reconstruction to civil rights. Mary Jane McLeod was born to Sam and Patsy McLeod, slaves until emancipation. Then they bought a little farm and built this cabin. Mary grew up free and hungry for knowledge. She picked up a book belonging to uh, a little white child, and the child told her to put that book down, that, uh, that books were not for little black children. And uh, she says that that you know, really stuck in her mind as, as uh, something that she wanted to do. At nine, she could pick 250 pounds of cotton a day, and she might well have stayed in the fields picking, except that twice fate picked her to go to school. She learned hard work, and from the mission schools, she acquired her own mission, to start a school for girls in her adopted home, Daytona Beach. Today, that school is Bethune-Cookman College, so named when the girls' school merged with Cookman in Jacksonville in 1923. At the height of the Depression in 1930, when her creditors were threatening to close her out, she asked our quartet, of which I was a member and her son a member, if we'd be willing to give up a year of our college work to travel with her to raise funds to pay her creditors off. We did that. And uh, we sent back to the college $15,000, and Mrs. Bethune paid her creditors off. Were it not for that, we wouldn't be there today. Edward Rodriguez of Daytona Beach is Mrs. Bethune's foster son and her lifelong champion. She had a sort of melodious uh, voice that uh, gave great expression and great determination. And she sort of captivated you when she talked to you because she looked you straight in the eyes and just said what she wanted to say, and it got over to the person to whom she was talking. Her house was on the campus where it is to this day. You can see it Mondays through Fridays, 9 to 5, exactly as it was the day she died here. Rodriguez spent his school days as Mrs. Bethune's houseboy. Her home was of a modest type. There was nothing extraordinary about it. She believed in the simple things of life, uh, really, and that you could make those simple things bring about a great transformation. She believed uh, in the great power and the great work of God, and she also believed in herself. She's had such guests there as Mrs. Eleanor Roosevelt, Madame Pandit, Ralph Bunch, Jackie Robinson, and many, many others have eaten there with her. The bed in her bedroom was over a hundred years old, and Mr. Booker T. Washington slept in that bed as her house guest on one occasion. And right across the hall in the guest room is another be bed that is a hundred years old in which Mrs. Eleanor Roosevelt slept on the occasion when she visited Mrs. Bethune in 1942. When President Roosevelt set up the National Youth Administration, she became director of its Negro Services, the first black woman for whom a federal position was created. Roosevelt uh, needed to, uh, probably at the urging of uh, Eleanor Roosevelt, needed to give uh, blacks some visibility uh, in this government since uh, blacks had switched from the Republican Party to the Democratic Party. Um, and uh, uh, she, she became one of, those, uh, one of those persons. Throughout and after World War II, Mrs. Bethune was a central figure in Roosevelt's black cabinet, incorporating New Deal policies into black America, and in turn serving the president as an advisor on race relations. Mary McLeod Bethune is buried on the Bethune-Cookman College campus. When she died, she left a last will and testament, not of her material possessions, but of the things she wanted to leave posterity. Love, hope, faith, racial dignity, and a thirst for education.